Hey guys, this is Mark Piller. Today we are talking about backendless push notifications or push notifications in general, a fantastic feature that allows you to connect with the users of your application. So what is a push notification? Well, it's a way to send a message to users of your app, which will be delivered to the application or to the user's device, regardless whether the application is running or not. That's right, so your app does not need to be on the foreground it may not need to be running at all, but push notifications will arrive, will show up in a notification center, whether on the Android devices or iOS devices, and then the user will be able to act on that notification um, by uh, responding to whatever the question may be in the notification or navigating down to the actual application and taking whatever the course of action may be. So the question is, how do push notifications work? There's a lot of confusion uh, that we see in the forums whenever developers start messing and just playing with push notifications. So let me give you an overview of the actual workflow that takes place whenever you work with push notifications. Their workflow uh, is almost identical between Android and uh, Apple uh, iOS. And uh, it starts like this. So imagine that you have your app running on a smartphone, it could be a tablet, it could actually be your Mac OS device, but let's uh, focus on the mobile devices first. So device, in order to receive push notifications, needs to register with the actual push notifications provider. And the push notifications provider, in case of iOS devices, it's going to be Apple Push Notification Service. It really is a, just a cluster of Apple servers that handle push notifications. So this device registration, device registration, results in a token, which is really just an ID that is being sent back by APNS that identifies that device registration with Apple push notification service. Once this device is registered, that token needs to be sent to Backendless. So that token goes to Backendless. At this point, Backendless knows that there is this device with that token that is registered and can start receiving push notifications. Now, let's say you need to send a push notification to that specific device. That request may come from anywhere. It may be another admin app, we'll just call it admin app. It could be another device. It could be a backendless management console. So let's just say that there is a group of apps that can publish push notifications. So we provide an API. So here's API, where you can send out a push notification to target a particular device identified by either its token, or you can say, send it out to all iOS devices. And then in this case, Backendless takes the information for your push notification and contacts APNS, Apple Push Notification Service, and says, hey, Apple, deliver this push notification to these devices. And then in this case, APNS sends out the actual push notification to that iOS device, and then the rest, you know how it's going to happen. There is a pop-up or there is a message that goes into the notification center and user can act on this. So it's a fairly elaborate scheme uh, with a lot of things that could actually go wrong. Uh, and specifically with iOS, it's a fairly uh, sensitive uh, set of steps that you have to take in order to configure everything. And a little misstep will result in push notifications not being delivered. However, once everything is set up, this is how things should be working, okay? So from the API perspective, uh, as far as what Backendless provides, we provide the API to handle this part. So whenever user registration and the device registration with Backendless happen, all of this is done with really just a single line of code that triggers the entire sequence. And then we provide the API to publish push notifications. Whenever push notifications are being sent, you can customize and configure what information will actually be delivered. 
So in case of iOS, you can say that this is going to be a text notification that just displays some information as text. You can do a badge update, which will basically update a little number on uh, application icon. You can play sound or you can do a combination of those things. Very similar with Google push notifications. It's pretty much exactly the same structure, except uh, instead of APNS, it's going to be a Google Cloud Messaging GCM. Uh, but the rest is uh, almost identical. So with Google Cloud Messaging, once again, you specify various bits of information uh, at the API level configured as headers, but uh, I'm not going to be talking about the API details a whole lot today because that's going to be a separate video. But the flow is exactly the same. Uh, when it comes to sending a push notification, when you, if you take a look at the Backendless console, it provides a fairly nice user interface where you can enter all the information that makes up a push notification. You can select whether you want to send it to a specific device or group of devices and schedule that not notification to go out. So hopefully you found this useful. This is uh, an overview of push notifications and uh, stay tuned for the next video. Thank you.